left ankle was swollen, and I thought it might have been a phlebitis, which I've had before. So I went to the doctor, and uh, the doctor said that my cholesterol was really high and my blood pressure was really high, so they started me on these medications. And not long after that, I was starting to feel discomfort, so I really thought it was the meds. And then uh, I did a gig last year, November, and I was in bed for two days afterwards. And this was not like a, you know an arena show; it was just a 50-minute set. So I was concerned. And then it occurred to me that the discomfort that I was experiencing felt like the gastrointestinal one. So um, we started looking at the meds I was taking, and um, it was determined that it wasn't the meds. So when I told the doctor about the history, my family history of colon cancer, he got me into USC right away. Excuse me, and they began doing tests and and a surgery. And in the surgery, they found a, like over 50 polyps, which is really a lot. You know, um, like my father, who has well, he doesn't have colon cancer now. He's cancer-free, touch wood. For over two years, and his mother had it, and and his grandfather had it. So, um, but the point is, my dad, for example, only had three or four polyps, and so they were very concerned. Um, they sent me home saying, you know, I'd be back. They thought that, that you know for sure I had to do another surgery because they couldn't get them all. And the surgery was like two hours longer than it was supposed to be. And I kept waking up and it, it was pretty bad. Anyhow, not long after the surgery, I started having symptoms that basically put me back in the emergency room. And it was determined that I had post polypectomy syndrome, which less than 4% of people that go through the procedure I had get. So already it was getting complicated. Then, um, when we got my biopsy results, it was, it was found that a lot of those polyps were not cancerous and never going to be cancer, but it was the ones that were big, like the cancerous ones were big. They were like 1.5 centimeters. I'm given to understand that they're normally 0 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere around there, so they're very large. And throughout this whole process, it was further complicated by the fact that I have irritable no, inflammatory bowel disease, which is not like irritable bowel syndrome, is the cure for that, I think, but there's no cure for the inflammatory bowel disease. So I have that on top of the colon cancer and the post polypectomy syndrome. The good news for me is that my specialist for the post polypectomy is also my surgeon. So she knows the lay of the land. She's been there. She's going back. And um, I think that she may be able to remove the diseased bowel tissue while they're getting the rest of the polyps. Um, at least that's the hope. Um, if they can remove that tissue, as far as I understand it at this point, I won't have to take medication for the, for the, the disease, not the cancer. Also, I was lucky in that they feel that they can get it all surgically and that I don't have to do radiation and chemo, which at first I was really excited about. I mean, excited is not really the word, but you know, no one wants to feel sick all the time. And, and, but I ended up being sick all the time because of the post polypectomy and then the inflammatory bowel disease, which my surgeon thinks was dormant, but was activated by the initial surgery. So the next surgery is harder, according to the doctor, stronger meds, longer recovery time, and um, more invasive. And then it's supposed to end with a colon reconstruction or a colonectomy. And at that point, I should be cancer free, providing it all goes the way they're hoping it goes. And then they'll just have to keep an eye on me, like a really, what they tell me, a really close eye. So I'll be having like a colonoscopy every year until um, I shuffle off the mortal coil, as they say. Words are fading, so what the hell do I say? To try explaining my heart without sounding fake. 